I cannot believe that we are already at the cusp of fall 2023, but here we are, which means that it is time for my September TBR. <laughs> Now I have a lot going on in September. I think of all of the days of September, I am home for 10 of them. And because of that, I know that I'm not gonna get the most reading done. I do have eight books that I'm gonna be talking to you guys about today. And my goal is to get through half of them. Two of them I really need to read in the month. And even though they're both like, the majority of the books on this TBR are quite thick actually, they're chunky paperbacks. But I think that two is definitely doable. I know that I'm not gonna read all eight, but I would like to get through four. I had an amazing reading month in August and because of that, I'm kind of ready to slow down with reading a little bit. But that was amazing because a lot of these books that you've been seeing on every single TBR for months have been cleared. There are still a couple lingering around and as well as a couple of book club books, those are the ones that I'm aiming to be done with in September so that I've kind of worked through the majority of my backlog before we go into some exciting stuff that's gonna be coming your way in. In October. Now I do know that I usually host a certain readathon in the month of September. That isn't happening just because of my lack of availability, but do stay tuned because something may be coming your way in the near future, something that I'm personally very excited about. But speaking of readathons, while I'm not hosting my own in September, I am going to be co-hosting one, which is the Battleathon that was created by Mel from Mel Lenore Reads. The goal of this readathon is quite simple. The concept is based around dragons. I'm representing the Black Dragon Riders along with Kitty from Spicy Cats Reads. And you essentially just want to read as many five-star books as possible. So you're supposed to be building a TBR of books that you think you're gonna rate really highly because the higher you rate your books, the more points you gain for your team. Now, each team does have a couple of additional prompts. Our bonus prompt is to read a book by an author that you have previously five starred before, which works really well for me because I tend to work through author's backlists as opposed to continuously like picking up new things. And the other prompt that we have that you have to complete first in the readathon is to read a book that has a prominent relationship, which to be fair, applies to a majority of books, if I'm being honest. So I'm not building like a specific TBR for that. If I do have time to add any more books on top of this core TBR, I'm definitely going to be keeping things in mind that I think that I may rate highly. And to be honest, we do have a couple of those in this stack anyway. I will put the announcement to battle a down in my description box if you guys would like to get involved. Like I said, it's a super simple one if you do wanna join us, but just make sure you're on the Black Dragon team. Cause like, I would hate to turn you on to something interesting and for you to betray me like that. It's not a good look, honey, please. Just don't, just don't do that to me. Don't do me dirty like that. We will start off with the book club books and arguably the most exciting one is The Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Carey. Now, this is the most exciting on a, like the, there's multiple reasons. The first one is that this is my in real life book club pick for the book club I am going to be hosting during the Rome trip, the Italy trip that is happening in September. I feel like this has rolled around really, really really quickly. And the other reason why this is exciting is because this is a book that I, it's, there's a couple like this that I kind of seem to latch onto that I see in Waterstones and every time I go into Waterstones, I will zero in on that book based on probably like the spine or the cover or something. This is one of those books. So I'm really excited to read it. And from everybody who has read it, I've heard really good things. This was also a gift from Hannah. So thank you very much to Hannah for sending this one my way. And the reason why I picked it for the book club is because it has an Italian inspiration. I don't know what that is because I haven't started this. And it's one of the books that has a very short, vague synopsis on the back. So so I'm assuming that this is a little bit of a political fantasy and it's about a con artist who has come to the city to trick her way into a noble house to secure her fortune and her sister's future. We also have nightmare magic in here and a lot of feuding nobility. One of the things I'm most excited about with this one is that with the cover and with the nobility in here, I'm assuming it's gonna have some of that like glitz and glamour and gold filigree that's come from like Italian history. And who doesn't love a masquerade ball? All. definitely me so I'm really excited to get into this one we then have the two usual suspects starting off with the other book that I definitely will be reading in September so if I only read two books which is a possibility they're going to be The Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Carrick and also Best Served Cold by Joe Abercrombie which is the catch-up book club book 
for July and August. Now the live show for this is due in the middle of September, but because of the availability of the hosts or lack thereof, this is definitely going to be postponed till hopefully the very beginning of October. Um, I'm gonna chat to the hosts and obviously like try and nail down a concrete date, but this definitely has to be read for me in September because I only get back from Italy on the 30th of September and I don't wanna be rushing through this for a live show right at the beginning of the month. But this is the first standalone in the first law universe. If I remember correctly, this one is, it's multi-perspective again, but one of the main characters that we will know from the first law trilogy is the father of the queen, who is the duke of a different country that we spend the majority of the time in in the first law trilogy. That is pretty much all I know about this, but of the standalones, I feel like this one is gonna have a lot of politics in it. I have been told that the point of Joe Abercrombie books is that they really have no point. So I'm going into this, not with less expectations because I definitely enjoy reading Joe Abercrombie but I'm definitely going in not expecting I don't want to say I'm expecting to be disappointed but knowing that the point of this series is that there is no point shall we say but I'm really excited about it because I do really like Joe Abercrombie's writing and I had a good time with the first law trilogy I feel like I just obviously expected it to come together a lot more than it eventually did but such is the nature of the series. And then the other one is for, of course, Wheel of Time Along, which is book five in the Wheel of Time series, The Fire of Heaven. So the live show for this is gonna be sometime in October. This, I should be starting this month, but it's not a book that I can travel with. So I wouldn't be surprised if I do only start this one at the beginning of October. And I'll do what I normally do. We'll set a date for the live show and I'll just break it down into sections leading up to that date, because that is pretty much the only way that I can get through this series. So if you are unfamiliar with Wheel of Time, it is of course a very slow moving, very detailed adult epic fantasy series following a classic struggle of dark and light. With every age and every turn of the wheel, the world has been turning further towards the dark. And this series is following a pivotal figure in this war, which is the Dragon Reborn. The Dragon Reborn is reincarnated in every age, in theory, to help turn the world towards light. It doesn't always work that way. He's pretty much a pawn between the forces of dark and light. And we're also following a handful of Tarverin, who are not the Dragon Reborn, but they are influential figures in this battle and they have the ability to alter the weave of the world, which is the pattern of events that make up every age. There are things that I love about this series. The delivery and the writing style is not that. But in book four, we got some hints at how intricate the plotting is in this series. And that is what I'm here for, essentially. So hoping for more of that, but I'm once again lowering my expectations a little bit because I think at this point, there's a very strong likelihood that I will never rate a book in this series five stars but I'm still in it to see the scope of that plot because I've heard that it's it's worth it. So for the Patreon picks the TBR veteran the book that is just not coming off my TBR is The Demon King by Cinder Williams Chimer. This was my Patreon pick for me and this one was Brandy's pick. Obviously in August I was predominantly following the prompts of the Magical Readathon and I was going off my core TBR like where they were the best fit for the prompt. They were the books that I was reading and I really wanted to get this one in but I just didn't I didn't quite this one is the first book in a YA high fantasy series that also is an extended universe like I know it has at least one spin-off series and all I know about it is that it is assumedly multi-perspective it has wizards it has a princess it has a magical amulet and all of that like good classic fantasy stuff still expecting really good things from this I feel like part of my reluctance to read this is the worry that I'm going to be disappointed because this is a book that I've had for years and one that I just expect really good things from. So I'm kind of worried that if I read it, it's gonna like shatter that illusion. But I mean, we'll see. If I manage to read three books, in September this one which is so funny because I've read 12 in August but if I do manage to read three books then Demon King is going to be the third and it is one that hopefully like if it lives up to my expectations it is one that I assume I'm gonna rate highly my July Patreon pick so this has been around a little while but not for too long but that was The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak this one is a you guys know what this one is more than I do because a lot of people have read this book but this is a historical fiction about a young girl in Nazi Germany who is trying to save books from being burned. I know that this is going to be an emotional one, obviously outside of my comfort zone, but this is one of those books that kind of, I want to say like transcends genre, like it's just one of those books that pretty much everybody has read. I'm not actually too worried about this being historical fiction, being somebody who doesn't love historical fiction, because I feel like it, the meaning of this book generally like transcends that 
if, if you know what I mean. And this one was Neezy's pick. And then my August pick, which was Farina's pick, is The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adier. This one is the first book in a YA fantasy duology following a king who picks a new bride every night. And every morning, the bride is either dead or missing, but she never returns to her family and she's never seen again. And the main character ensures that she is the one that is picked to become the next bride because I think her sister has been chosen in the past and has gone missing or died. So she would like to take revenge on the king for what happened to her sister. And now we have to pick the book for September. So if you guys are unaware of how this works, if you are part of the Inner Circle tier on my Patreon, then you get to recommend a book that goes into this mug. Every month I will pick a book out and I'll add it to my TBR. In theory, I will read it in that month. In reality, I will read it in the few months that follow the month that it is picked. I've had a little bit of a refresh in here, taking everything out, shaking it up, added a bunch of new stuff in from my new Inner Circle members. Thank you guys, you guys do the most. I've also gone through and taken out anything that's like a duplicate of something that I've read and things like that. So everything in here is nice and fresh, but I do want to try and dig down as far as possible because I've been taking off the top quite frequently because of how full this has been, but we're gonna have a rummage this time. Let's go, not quite for the very, bottom. We want this one. Oh, it's yellow, which means that it was put in before the start of 2023. Oh, Gideon the 9th. Wow. Oh, it's right in front of me as well, which is real handy. Is this like the OG? Oh my God, this is, this is like the original Illumicrate copy of Gideon the Ninth. And I think that this is one of the first Illumicrate books that I got. So this one is Ian's pick. So thank you very much. This is one that I have been wanting to get to for quite some time. I am a little bit intimidated by it though. And it's one of those series, kind of like Red Rising, The Diviners, Jade City, which is ones that I always thought assumed, knew that I was going to love. And for that reason, never really felt a need to pick them up. I mean, The Demon King falls into that category as well, I guess. This one, all I know about it actually, is that it is sapphic necromancers in space, which I mean, sign me up. Something that concerns me a little bit about this though, is that I know that it is very confusing for at least the first half of the book. And it's one of those where you kind of just have to roll with it. If it turns out that by the end of the book or the end of the series, like things are becoming clear, and there's actually a reason for all of this confusion, then I'm down. But if it's one of those where you just have to keep rolling with it until the ball stops rolling, that's not my preferred method of storytelling. I like a lot of depth, complexity and logic that's kind of like not necessarily well explained. It doesn't have to be info dumped at the beginning, but where you know that that logic is there and that you will get a good understanding of it by the, the end of the story. Because I really want to understand the world, not just kind of experience the story in the world you know? So we'll see how this goes. Hopefully I love it. I know a lot of people really, really do. And once again, this is a great one to be added to my September TBR. Not that I'm necessarily going to get to it in September and I actually probably won't, but it is again, one that I assume that I'm going to be rating quite highly when I do get to it. And the last book I have to add to this TBR is an arc. And it is an arc from an author whose books I have previously given five stars to. And that is Swordcatcher by Cassandra Clare. So this one is released in October. October, although I'm not sure of the exact date. So I do have into October to get to this one, but I would like to start in September. So ideally, if I can read half of this TBR, it's gonna be Mask of Mirrors, Best Serve Cold, The Demon King, and Sword Catcher. And as you've seen, like they are all pretty thick paperbacks. <laughs> So wish me luck. But this one is Cassandra Clare's adult fantasy debut. Cassandra Clare is an author that I have had issue with as an author, but whose books I have always rated highly. And I expect this to be no exception. Cassandra Clare provides characters that you can root for with a really compelling story in a well thought, like a pretty well developed world. And that's what I'm expecting from Swordcatcher. Now this is going to be the first high fantasy story as well as adult story that I've read from Cassandra Clare. So we'll We'll see how it goes but this is following two characters both of whom are outcasts one of which is the sword catcher for a prince so essentially like his bodyguard and the other one is a physician who has been who is part of a community that is ostracized for its rare magical abilities like i'm going into this one pretty blind but i'm pretty confident i'm going to enjoy this because while i have had my issue with cassandra claire i do still really like her books so this 
is my September TBR. It's a lot. There's only two books on this entire stack that are under 500 pages. So I know we're not doing the entire thing, but keep your fingers crossed for me that I do manage to get through half of these in the month. I did actually add up the pages for this because we haven't done that for a while and I was curious. And the total pages we have is 4,669. And if I were to try and do this all in September, that would be 155 pages a day. Now I will say that that is less than I have read in August, but I'm also going to say that I'm not reading anywhere near that much in, in September because August has been my best month of all time, which is a page number that I haven't even got anywhere close to achieving since July 2021, which was my previous best reading month ever. So yeah, it's not, we're not going to do the whole thing, but we're going to try our best. I definitely need to read two. Hopefully I will read four, but down in the comments, let me know if you've read any of these books and what you guys thought of them. Also, do let me know if you are participating in Battlethon and if you're on the Black Dragon team. If not, don't talk to me. <laughs> I'm only kidding. But aside from that, guys, please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna. If you head to my description box, you'll find a link to my Goodreads, Instagram, and Twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those, as well as link to my bookish candle website, the Etsy for that, and a 10% off discount code. But that's it from me today, guys. Bye. Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate You say you will go Where nobody knows With guns hidden under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no We're never gonna quit it, no